In my opinion, January and February are the most boring months of the year. I view New Year's Day as the reset button being pushed. People are recovering from what I call the holiday hangover, recovering from the excitement and the exhaustion from the holiday season and the hits that their bank accounts took and focusing on how they're going to achieve their New Year's resolutions. The year doesn't start picking up until March. I figured that during these slow months, I would talk about the pop culture moments that I remember the most from the year 2001, one of the years that I remember the most. My name is Theo Korba. Welcome to my channel where I talk about stuff that I like to talk about, like a particular year where the music was great if you're a hip hop and R&B fan. Everything was going great in entertainment and fashion, then it all came to a halt because of a national tragedy that didn't just change the country, it changed the world. Let's get into it. Hit it! Count around, remix on! This city hop, remix here, is a track that's the chart. In the 90s, hip-hop fashion, also known as streetwear, started gaining traction thanks to streetwear brands like Carl Kanai, Cross Colors, Fat Farm, Echo, Aniche, Mecca USA, FUBU, and even Tommy Hilfiger. In 2001, streetwear was at its peak. Streetwear brands could be found at department stores. They also started producing their own perfumes and colognes, fashion jewelry, and streetwear brands for women started to emerge. In 1999, model turned fashion designer Kamora Lee Simmons launched her fashion brand Baby Fat. The women's clothing brand consisted of bedazzled baby tees, velour tracksuits, denim jeans, their signature puffer jackets, and signature fox fur jackets. Baby Fat was also known for its runway shows that featured celebrity appearances along with Kimora and her family making appearances at the end of the shows. In 2001, Baby Fat reported gross revenue of 30 million, a mark that took Fat Farm six years to reach. I did not know about Baby Fat at the time until I stumbled upon Baby Fat's website while I was doing a Google search. I loved the shirt that Kamara was wearing on the homepage and I loved the clothes. Women streetwear brands started gaining popularity around that time, such as Lady Aniche, Aberex, Echo Red, Rockaware, and Sean John. I really liked the streetwear look. I still like streetwear. I felt bad that I couldn't afford the clothes, and I thought that going to high school full-time and working is tough, so I wasn't about to do that. If you were around during that time, and you're a hip-hop and R&B fan, you were probably wearing clothes from the aforementioned brands. Salute to the streetwear brands that paved the way for streetwear to be globally recognized today. In 2001, actress and recording artist Jennifer Lopez, Affleck, was starring in movies and released her second album, J-Lo. The album debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard Top 200 Albums Chart, and her movie, The Wedding Planner, debuted at number one on the U.S. box office, making her the first entertainer to have a number one album and number one movie on the same week in the United States. On April 2nd, 2001, Jennifer Lopez launched her woman's clothing line, J-Lo by Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez was quoted saying, I find it is difficult for women who are curvaceous to find clothes in stores that fit. The voluptuous woman is almost ignored. I want to offer clothes that are wonderfully designed and will fit women of all sizes. Everybody gets to be sexy. The clothing line, in my opinion, was most known for their velour jumpsuits, 
like the one she wore in the I'm Real remix music video and the clothing line was pretty popular because of her fashion sense and her celebrity. I liked the velour and denim jumpsuits, the earth sweater and the varsity jacket. J-Lo by Jennifer Lopez launched during a time when celebrities were launching their own clothing lines and it seems like the same power of celebrity owned clothing lines are dependent on the popularity of the celebrity. If the celebrity has passed their peak, the interest in the clothing line starts to decline and then the clothing line disappears unless the clothing line's quality surpasses the celebrity's popularity. In my opinion, J-Lo by Jennifer Lopez disappeared by the end of the decade because when the peak of her popularity passed, the public interest in the clothing line declined. Jennifer Lopez has had successful business endeavors since her clothing line, such as her perfumes, her production company, and her beauty brand. In 2001, R&B and hip hop songs were being frequently heard on pop radio and not just on R&B and hip hop radio. R&B and hip hop songs were charting high on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart and albums by R&B and hip hop artists were also charting high on the Billboard 200 albums chart. Alicia Keys released her debut single, Fallen. It peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and her debut album, Songs in A Minor, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and has sold 12 million copies worldwide. Aaliyah released her self-titled third album. It produced the hit song, Rock the Boat, which peaked at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and the album has sold 13 million copies worldwide. Mary J. Blige released the song, Family Affair, from her fifth album, No More Drama, the song was number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for six weeks, and it's one of Mary J. Blige's most well-known songs, in my opinion. Missy Elliott released the song Get Your Freak On. It was the lead single from her third album, Missy, So Addictive. The song peaked at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100, and the album has sold 1.767 million copies in the United States. British recording artist Craig David released his debut US single, Fill Me In, and the song peaked at number 15 on the Hot 100. His debut album, Born to Do It, peaked at number 11 on the US albums chart and has sold 8 million copies worldwide. Usher released the song, You Remind Me, from his third album, 8701. The song topped the US singles chart and the album has sold 8 million copies worldwide. Jay-Z released Izzo, Hova, from his sixth album, The Blueprint. The song peaked at number eight on the Hot 100 and is one of his most well-known songs. Eve released her second album, Scorpion. It features the song, Let Me Blow Your Mind, a duet with Gwen Stefani. The song peaked at number two on the Hot 100 singles chart and won Eve her first Grammy Award for Best Rap Song Collaboration. The album has gone on to sell 1.5 million units in the United States. The R&B and hip hop hit songs from that year are plentiful. If you're an R&B and hip hop fan, this was an enjoyable year for music. I can't talk about 2001 without talking about the tragedy that changed the world. It was 8.36 a.m. on September 11, 2001, when American Airlines Flight 11 flew into the North Tower of the World Trade Center complex in Lower Manhattan. 17 minutes later, United Airlines Flight 175 flew into the World Trade Center's South Tower. The Twin Towers of the World Trade Center were one of the world's five tallest buildings at the time. Both buildings were 110-story skyscrapers, 
and they both collapsed an hour and 45 minutes later. The third flight, American Airlines Flight 77, crashed into the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m., causing a partial collapse. And the fourth flight, United Airlines Flight 93, was flying in the direction of the Capitol, but the passengers fought for control, forcing the hijackers to nosedive the plane into a Stony Creek Township field near Skanksville at 10.03 a.m. Investigators concluded that Flight 93's target was either the United States Capitol or the White House. 2,996 lives were lost that day, and 6,000 to 25,000 people were injured. I was a junior in high school when the 9-11 attacks happened. I rarely watched TV before going to school, so I didn't know about what happened until I got on the bus and heard the radio DJs talking about what happened. The school bus was quiet because everyone was listening to what was being said on the radio. And when I got to school, the vibe was silent. And when I was in science class, the teacher and the students talked about what happened. And that's when I realized how many lives were lost that day. And my teacher said, remember where you were. If you were around during that time, you remember just how tragic that day was and the after effect. It felt like the country came to a halt for days because everyone was in shock. At the same time, everyone came together to help in any way they could. The country became unified instead of torn apart. Let me be your hero. After 9-11 happened, it was unclear how much the United States was going to change, especially when it came to gatherings that consisted of huge crowds. I remember there was a list of songs that could not be played on the radio because they contained certain words that were reminiscent of what happened that day. I read that list, and it was pretty lengthy. New York City was at a standstill for a minute. I remember the episode of TRL after 9-11, where celebrities called in to talk about what happened. The audience was silent throughout the show, and I remember them showing a the view of Times Square. It was like there was nobody there and seeing the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner being displayed where the stock market ticker was normally shown. That was definitely a dark time. Airport security changed significantly after 9-11 happened. Millennials like myself and generations before remember when there was a time where you could walk up to the windows at the airport and watch the planes take off after saying goodbye to your loved ones. Nowadays, you say goodbye to your loved ones before they start going through airport security and go home. Or you just drop them off at the airport and go home. You also have to take off your shoes before going through airport security. You can't have liquids in your luggage, not even hair gel. And you can't have a belt on when you're going through airport security. In my opinion, the one thing that we did not let 9-11 change is the way we live. Sporting events started happening again. Concerts and award shows started happening again. The lighting of the Christmas tree at the Rockefeller Center happened on December that year because we refused to let what happened three months ago prior stop us from celebrating the holidays. And we started laughing again, thanks to Saturday Night Live. The One World Trade Center was built in place of the original World Trade Center. Construction started in 2006 and completed in 2013. The building officially opened the following year. The former location of the Twin Towers is now a memorial and a museum, and on September 11th of each year, the museum projects tribute lights into the sky to honor the lives that were lost that day. I think that in the end, the September 11th attacks made us stronger. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.